Did you do that? Do what? Mary Poppins Returns opens December 19th, bringing the much-loved family classic back to life. The new iteration is set in 1930s London and sees the return of everyone's favourite nanny, this time played by Emily Blunt, to the Banks household, only now it's a grown-up Michael Banks who lives with his three children, plus his sister Jane. Academy Award-winning costume designer Sandy Powell was tasked with bringing the look and feel of Depression-era England to the screen through the character's attire. I was very conscious that this film had to appeal to all ages because I was four years old when I saw the original. I wanted each person to have a very significant look like in a children's picture book, she says. Powell's approach to dealing with the legacy of the film was to watch it once, then make 448 original costumes from scratch. Powell only made reference to the original film by way of Mary Poppins' arrival outfit, a mid-calf length belted coat with a short double cape, handcrafted Art Deco buttons and belt buckle, accented with a red straw hat, red leather gloves and shoes, and a carpet bag referencing Art Deco carpets. Powell explains that the look shared some similarity with the original but was appropriate for 1934 and a contemporary audience. For Blunt, Powell's designs really helped her inhabit the role, with the actress revealing, It was only when I put on her beautiful costumes and tilted the hat to the saucy angle Sandy insisted it be at that I truly felt like the character. She was incredibly collaborative too, interested in every idiosyncrasy I wanted to bring to the character. She welcomed and blended the eccentricity and the vanity of Mary in such a fab way. One of the adventures enjoyed by the film's characters is a visit to the fix-it shop of Mary's eccentric cousin Topsy, played by the legendary Meryl Streep. Topsy is a bohemian type who, says Powell, for some reason is of Eastern European origin and wears hair and pants, a colourful velvet kimono, armloads of bangles and a turban. We played around with kimono shapes with fringing on the bottom, Powell explains. I wanted bright colour on black and we looked at samples from the 1920s and 30s, but we ended up doing a discharge print on Velvet Devore that we then hand painted. It took the longest to make of anything in the entire film and we made seven of them to have multiples. It really is couture. Incidentally, Topsy's shop, filled with china, musical instruments and pianos all hung upside down, proved to be the most challenging set for the film's designers, namely Oscar-winning set decorator Gordon Sim and Oscar-winning production designer John Meyer. We had never done anything like this before. We worked with a prop master for six months on the set, says Sim. Meyer agrees, adding, literally everything from torn paintings to grand pianos had to be hung upside down and even discussing it made everyone crazy. Up is down, floor is ceiling and it took two weeks before everyone even understood the language. Director Rob Marshall goes so far as to say it was one of the most treacherous sets he had ever been on. It was literally a 360 degree set and hard to register what items were as they were hanging upside down. Meryl kept bumping her head on things, he recalls. And with London assuming its place as one of the film's primary characters, one of the most impressive designs was the recreation of Big Ben, which was the result of some fairly hands-on research. The design team actually climbed into the belfry of the actual tower, with earplugs, of course. We got to walk up and go behind the clock to see the mechanism that turns it, says Maya. When Big Ben ran, I thought, how amazing is this? The clock face and sections of the tower are completely authentic, and an exact reproduction was made of what is behind it. It's a little bit of real and movie magic. To read more on this story, head to THR.com. For The Hollywood Reporter News, I'm Lindsay Rodriguez.